So welcome everyone. Uh, I'm super excited to be here today to speak with all of you. Um, for those of you who have just joined, feel free to um, keep yourself on mute just so that we can minimize any feedback that we are getting. Um, but if you do have questions throughout, feel free to put them in the chat box or um, feel free to just unmute yourself and let me know that you have a question um, and we can address those throughout and at the end. Um, of the presentation. Great, so we've hit the hour. Uh, as I said, I'm really excited to be here today to speak with all of you about Global Brigades as an organization and our new virtual programming opportunity called Telebrigades. So to start, um, I would actually just love to hear from all of you. Um, where in the world are you joining us from today? If you want to throw in the chat um, your state or your town or um, the country that you're in. Um, so yeah, would love to hear from some of you just in the chat box. Uh, where are you joining us from today? Someone in Omaha, Nebraska. Awesome. Alberta, Canada. Wonderful. Birmingham, Alabama. Pittsburgh, Dallas, Springfield, Colorado. Awesome, all over the place, great. Wonderful. Welcome everyone. California, Key West, Florida. Awesome. I just like to start with that just to kind of see where everyone is joining us from. Majority of you are joining us from somewhere in the US, um, which is great. So for anyone who has just joined, um, feel free to just mute yourself and then um, uh, we'll go ahead and if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and just um, ask me as we go along. Great, so um, we'll start with a little introduction about me. Uh, my name is Anna Jamison. I am a, the Senior Volunteer Engagement Associate with Global Brigades. Um, and I'm actually from Nova Scotia on the East Coast of Canada. So the other person who said they were from Alberta, um, go Canada. I'm glad that there is another Canadian in the room. That's really awesome. Um, and I have actually been working for Global Brigades for a little over two years. Um, one thing I want to point out is that my email is listed here on the slide. So if at any point you do have any questions or um, in the next couple of days or weeks you think of some questions or really want to get involved, please send me an email and let me know. Um, I'd love to chat with you more, whether that's via email or on a one-on-one -on -one call, um, whatever works better for you. But my email is always open. Um, so definitely let me know if anything comes up or you do have any questions. So to start off, I really want to dive into some more information about Global Brigades as an organization, and then we'll talk about more um, of a specific opportunity with Global Brigades called Telebrigades. So to start off, when we think about who we are as an organization, it is super important to take a look at our mission and mission. As an um, international development and community development organization, um, it really helps us understand why we exist as an organization, what our purpose is, and what our end goal is. This is super important as it unites various stakeholders, including staff, volunteers, donors, and other organizations so that we are all on the same page. Our mission is to empower volunteers and under-resourced communities to resolve global health and economic disparities and inspire all involved to collaboratively work towards an equal world. Our vision Oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and meet everyone. Um, just please meet yourself as you come in because I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Great. Okay, so our, our vision as an organization is to improve the quality of life by igniting the largest student-led social responsibility movement on the planet. 
These statements are really important as every decision that we make as an organization needs to really align with our mission and our vision. And everything you do in your role or involvement with Global Brigades moving forward should also be working towards our mission and our vision. Another important thing to understand about our organization is where we work and some of the language we use to talk about these various entities. So our volunteer sending countries are the countries where our volunteer base is from and where we have full nonprofit entities set up as well as a board of directors set up. So we have nonprofit status in and send volunteers from the US, Canada, the UK, and Germany. And the large majority of our volunteers come from the US, followed by Canada. Volunteer receiving countries or programming countries is where our programming happens and where volunteers travel to. Just like our volunteer sending countries, each of the volunteer receiving countries has a registered nonprofit entity. Each program country has a team of full time staff that develop, implement, perpetuate, and lead year round with and without volunteers. And that has become increasingly apparent during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, our in-country teams have really, really shown a ton of leadership and innovation during this time. And so the program countries are Honduras, Panama, Guatemala, and Nicaragua in, in Central America, and then Ghana in West Africa, and then Greece. So, those are all of our programming countries that we have right now. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the model that Global Brigades uses for community and holistic international development. So the holistic model is something that is very unique to Global Brigades and it's really important to understand our approach to community development. It's essentially how we do what we do as an organization. So by definition, holistic means a concern for whole or complete systems rather than the analysis and treatment of smaller parts. In regards to community development, this means avoiding quick band-aid fixes and approaching a problem from many different directions. It's really based on the fact that truly breaking the poverty cycle requires a multidisciplinary approach. The programs that make up the holistic model fall into three major categories. The first one being sustainable health systems, economic development, and water and sanitation infrastructure. Further breaking down these categories as a part of sustainable health systems, we have our medical and dental brigades and the community health worker program. As a part of economic development, we have business and legal empowerment brigades and the community microfinance program. And as a part of water and sanitation infrastructure, we have water engineering and public health brigades. I want to note here that the end goal of the holistic model is to empower a community. And an empowered community sustainably takes over all of the health and economic development projects. Brigades and volunteers are no longer sent and our relationship with a community evolves into one of follow-up and guidance. So, with the holistic model in a really strong place and deemed a really powerful tool for development, we really needed an ambitious goal to scale the impact that we were making and really make an effort to quantify and outline the work that we're doing. So this leads me to talk a little bit more about our Empowered 100 initiative and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So to start off with the Empowered 100, um, the Empowered 100 is our goal as an organization to empower 100 rural communities in Ghana, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama, representing about 65,000 persons to permanently rise out of global poverty through the three core components, the sustainable health systems, WASH, and economic development. Importantly, um, these three components correspond really closely to the six goals that we've outlined for an empowered community and also naturally really align with three of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So number three is good health and well-being, number six is clean water and sanitation, and number eight is decent work and economic growth. 
the UN Sustainable Development Goals, if you don't already know, um, were 17 goals that were decided upon by our world leaders to fight poverty, to fight climate change and inequality globally. Um, and so as Global Brigades, we really wanted to be able to unite ourselves with these goals and work alongside all of these other countries and organizations and leaders um, that are also working towards the UN SDGs. And so our ultimate goal as an organization is to create a blueprint to end rural poverty in our lifetime. That is like the overarching goal of our organization. So just to summarize a little bit, um, the Empowered 100 initiative is our goal to empower 100 rural communities to permanently rise out of poverty through the three core components, the sustainable health systems, the water, sanitation and hygiene, and economic development which align with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So at this point, we have gone over kind of who we are as an organization, what our mission is, what our vision is, um, and how we are planning to go about empowering communities and helping communities rise out of rural poverty. So now you might be thinking, okay, well, what does it mean to actually empower a community? What goals do we have? Um, to meet to know that a community is actually empowered. So that leads us to um, the goals for the empowered community. So as an organization, we have six goals um, for an empowered community. So the first one, or the first two, I guess, um, corresponding to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number three, good health and well-being and our sustainable health systems programming. Goal number one is regular, equal, and affordable access to a healthcare professional and medication. And goal number two is daily access to a trained community health worker. And then corresponding to UN SDG number six, clean water and sanitation and our WASH programming is goal number three, um, which is continuous access to a clean water system with a water council in place. And goal number four is at least 90% coverage of public health infrastructure projects. And then finally, corresponding to UN SDG 8, Good Jobs and Economic Growth and our Economic Development Programming, goal number five is equal access to sufficient affordable credit with a community bank in place. And goal six is at least 1.5% 1 1 annual increase of community savings reflecting economic growth. So I know that's a lot um, and you definitely don't have to remember all of that. This is being recorded, um, but this is just kind of the beginning of the definition of these goals. And there are so many other things that need to be taken into consideration, as you can imagine, um, with defining all of these terms like regular and continuous access and ensuring that the goals are sufficient and detailed enough to support the community partners that we're working with. Um, we have a year-round monitoring and evaluation team that is working on these goals um, and working with community leaders to make sure these are attainable and making sure we have all of the definitions that we need. So um, for, you know, just a regular student that's involved with Global Brigades, it's important to know, you know, what does it actually mean to be an empowered community and what our long-term goals are. Um, but you would never have to recite these, um, these goals, but it is just important to realize that, you know, we're taking this as many steps forward as we can in defining all of these goals and all of these terms. So, um, now that we have a little bit more of a foundational knowledge about Global Brigades, um, I'm just going to check the chat box to see if there were any questions about any of that um, and then we can talk a little bit more about telebrigades so if you do have any questions feel free to talk them or unmute yourself we can also do a lot of questions at the end Is this organization in the Caribbean as well? Um, so we do have some groups um, that volunteer with us from the Caribbean. Um, the only thing, the only kind of difference would be 
um, that depending on you know where you are, our US entity takes those groups and you have to sign up under our um, United States entity. So depending on what your um, specific currency and things like that are, it would kind of factor in on starting a brand new chapter um, if you're affiliated with like a university in the Caribbean. Um, but if you were willing to sign up under our US entity, you would have to fundraise in USD. Um, so that would be the only consideration if you are in a um, Caribbean country that need, that had a different type of currency, um, then you wouldn't be able to fundraise in that specific currency, which might cause issues for some people. Um, so that would be the, the one consideration um, to take into, but we do have, we have had groups that are able to fundraise in USD and participate um, from, from some of those schools. And then um, the next question was, do you partner with any organizations like UNICEF for the WASH goals? Um, that's a great question. And the answer is yes, our teams that work on our WASH projects are incredibly talented with coming up with partnerships and really working with other organizations. Um, as you know, you can imagine building um, water systems and doing engineering projects and mapping out water systems for rural communities can be incredibly um, time consuming and also incredibly expensive depending on the community, depending if they need um, to have a pump or um, to pump water up from the ground or if they just need a gravity fed system for their water system. The water systems can range um, in price to build a lot of the time. So we have been able to um, partner with other organizations like UNICEF um, to be able to complete those water projects and work alongside other organizations, especially other organizations that are established um, in some of our programming countries like Honduras and Panama and Nicaragua. Um, so yeah, great questions, everyone. Thanks so much. Um, and feel free to keep, I'm gonna minimize the chat, the chat box as I keep going, but um, if you do have questions, feel free to put them in there and we will jump back to where we were as we go. Great, so um, now that we've talked a little bit more about Global Brigades, you might be wondering, you know, how can I get involved with this organization? How do we continue to make impact in communities um, today? So we're gonna talk more about a specific virtual opportunity called Telebrigades. Um, historically, we worked only with groups that were planning to travel into countries and experience our programs in country. Um, on in-person brigades. But as you all know, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this has not been possible for us. Um, and so as an organization, we've really had to innovate and figure out how we do our programming during this time, how we successfully you know, uphold our commitments to the community members and community partners that we've been working with um, during this time. It's been really challenging for everyone. So. Um, that has been a really big challenge for us, but what has come out of this is really pushing forward with our ideas to um, do some telebrigades, some virtual engagement, um, and we had already been kind of talking about using telemedicine platforms and things like that to support our sustainable health system, system programming, but um, this just really pushed it forward in a way that, you know, none of us really imagined happening so quickly. Um, so telebrigades enable chapters to make the equivalent community impact as an in-person brigade and gain valuable life experience with the benefits of limiting time away from school and home, being able to involve more volunteers due to more accessible fundraising goals and reducing carbon emissions associated with air travel. Right now, um, we have medical, business, engineering, and public health telebrigades. And so I'm going to talk um, in detail about medical and business telebrigades today. But if you do have any questions about any of the other programs, you can always contact me via email and we can walk through those itineraries and donation goals together. Um, but we're going to talk really in detail about some of the impact and some of the itineraries for the medical and the business telebrigades. Okay, so medical telebrigades. 
Um, let's dive into this program. Um, this slide lists the impact that is made not only for a rural community in Honduras that you're going to be working with, but also impact for the volunteers. And so, as I mentioned earlier, um, these programs are really making equivalent impact in communities as our in-person brigade programs do. Um, we have our very first telebrigades coming up um, mid-August, so we're really going to be able to see this in action. Um, our infantry program teams have worked so hard developing these itineraries and figuring out kind of how this is going to work for everyone. So um, we're really excited about this opportunity and I hope that you all are too and, you know, have an inkling to get involved after I share this information with you. So I'm going to highlight a couple points um, on this slide, but encourage you to reach out. You'll have the recording here so you can pause and read this. We also have um, telebrigade like pamphlets that have all this information on it as well um, that I can send along to you. So in terms of impact for volunteers, notably here, um, just gaining international telemedical experience, you'll be um, having experience in a bilingual patient care setting with, with a fluent translator and an opportunity to develop, practice, and apply your medical Spanish skills or grow medical Spanish skills, um, building cultural competence and awareness of the differences between international health systems and challenges with medical access in remote communities in Honduras. Um, and then in terms of impact for community, notably here, um, just increased access to critical care services and medications that are otherwise limited or not affordable, um, regular follow-up for chronic patients, and increased opportunity for specialty care, and also increased continuity of care from both local and international doctors. So the next two slides um, are an overview of the medical brigade's itinerary, or telebrigade itinerary, sorry. I'm not going to go through this line by line, um, but there are some really specific things I want to point out about the itinerary that are really important. So the first thing is that these itineraries and sessions are extremely flexible depending on your group schedule. Um, we could condense this into a week or spread it out across a semester, whatever is going to work best for your chapter and for your volunteers. The other thing to notice here is that we have the live sessions that will be conducted via video conferencing, and then accompanying those, we have outlined some self-paced activities for the chapter to complete. So once you decide to lead a telebrigade, we will work with you to figure out your special for your group and outline which sessions will be standalone or if we want to combine any sessions to shorten the time it takes to complete the telebrigade. So lots of flexibility um, available for the telebrigade itinerary and a combination of live sessions and self-paced sessions or self-paced activities. In total, there are, are nine live sessions, um, and so this will include meeting community health workers, you'll do awareness, orientation, and learning about some cultural context. You'll be preparing for the rural clinic day um, and prepping to use the telemedicine platform and doing a mock patient consultation. You'll then take part in the urban clinic day, um, which will be a live streamed clinic with the telemedical devices for students to shadow triage and patient consultations from our physical clinic in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, which is the capital. Um, this is definitely taking into consideration, you know, patient privacy and things like that with the use of the approved telemedical devices. And um, our in-country teams are working really closely with our chief legal officer to make sure that um, all of the privacy and things like that are protected for all of the patients in the clinic. And then um, you'll also have a rural clinic recap day. So um, during this day um, with this telebrigade, your donation goal is also going towards supporting a rural clinic day. Um, so doctors, dentists, and pharmacists will um, work with one of our community partners to do a rural clinic day in their community. And then they'll do a recap for you. They'll have a summary um, and then they'll 
the doctors will present some of the most interesting case studies. You'll talk about um, some of the specific patient interactions that they've had and, and things like that during that rural clinic day. And then you'll also be doing a monitoring and evaluation activity to learn about data analysis and how we go about um, looking at our impact um, through monitoring and evaluation. And then um, the last slide that I wanted to chat about um, just in terms of the medical telebrigades is the fundraising goals. Um, so with the fundraising goal, um, if you have a group of 15 to 24 volunteers, this can be fellow students, it can be your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad, um, members of your community, really whoever, they don't have to be students to participate in this program. Um, just a group of 15 to 24 volunteers. The individual donation goal per person is 295 USD. Um, and this supports implement, implementation of one rural clinic day and one city clinic day. Then as you recruit more volunteers, you can make more impact with the implementation of a, an additional rural clinic day. So with 25 to 39 volunteers, um, the donation goal actually goes down and you'll support the implementation of two rural clinic days and a city clinic day. Um, and then with 40 plus volunteers, you'll have um, the implementation of three rural clinic days and one city clinic day. So um, that's what that looks like. And so, you know, this can be something that you work towards over the span of, you know, a year, six months. Um, you don't have to kind of um, put this up front right away. It definitely is something that you can work towards fundraising and we definitely um, encourage you to do that. Awesome. Um, and then the other thing I just want to point out, which is the same for um, the business telebrigades, is that scholarships are available. Um, so if any of you, you know, want to go ahead and start a brand new chapter on your campus um, and want to lead a telebrigade at your school or in your community, um, you actually are awarded a scholarship for that um, and you won't have to meet your fundraising goal. Um, so that that scholarship covers the fundraising goal for you, which is really awesome. Um, so that is definitely something to take into consideration when you're thinking about um, starting a telebrigade on your um, school's campus or in your community. Okay, so for the sake of time, we're going to keep going um, and we're going to talk about business telebrigades. So similarly to the medical program, um, we're going to look a little bit more closely at business telebrigades. So we'll start with the impact. Um, impact for volunteers, you'll receive international business consulting experience. You'll get professional mentorship from Deloitte and Accenture to help improve the quality of the deliverables. Um, practical experience working on real business projects virtually increase and increased awareness of differences between international economic systems and the challenges to access in finance in remote communities. And then the impact for the community, pro bono consulting, um, business consulting, and support for the participating business or client that you're working with. Access to affordable loans to invest in their business through Kiva um, or group donation. Follow up by a GB staff member as business mentors, tangible business deliverables to improve business performance, and financial literacy training for the community. So in terms of the itineraries for the business program, um, again, there is a lot of flexibility with these itineraries. When you sign up to lead a business telebrigade, um, we will work with you to build and outline your telebrigade itinerary that fits your chapter and your volunteers best. So whether you want to do this over the span of like your spring break week or over the winter break, um, or you want to um, span it out over a semester, I don't know if we have any um, professors or teachers in, in this presentation, but we could also incorporate it into a class um, and do it throughout a semester. We have a director of university and corporate relations that has been working with a lot of faculty and staff members to actually incorporate this into um, their, their class structure, which is really awesome. Finally, it got 
Um, so then um, with a combination of live and self-paced sessions throughout the business telebrigades, you will work on participating in a client selection, a session with meeting the client and preparing for the program with your GD coordinator. Um, you'll learn about the client information and you'll do a virtual business tour. Um, you'll get loan details in the context of the business that you're working with. And you'll also be working with a professional mentor, like I said, from Deloitte or from Accenture, who will help the group ask strategic questions during the consultation day. You'll have a live virtual client consultation um, with the business clients and the professional mentors to answer questions and gather information for the final business deliverables. Um, and then there will be a deliverable submission session and a Kiva activity. Kiva is a microloan crowdfunding platform that we work with. Um, and then you'll also give the final presentation to the client and you'll have a project celebration as well as an impact evaluation activity um, similar to the medical program. So those are just some of the components. And as I said, we have um, actually separate like pamphlets for um, business telebrigades and medical and engineering and public health. Um, and so I can send those to you, just shoot me an email anytime, um, and I can send those to you for the program that you're interested in or for all of them, um, and we can talk more in depth about what this could look like for a chapter at your university. Um, but just to give you a little bit of a peek into what a business telebrigade could look like, um, that is some of the sessions that you'll be taking part in. And then um, I wanted to share with you an example of one of the clients you could be working with. Um, so Pascuala Jimenez is an exceptional leader in the community of El Bale um, and is actually the current treasurer of their community bank. And so her retail business is her main economic activity, but Pascuela also dedicates herself to fishing, agriculture, and handcraft artisan work. So um, there are a variety of clients you could, and businesses that you could be working with, um, and you'll be able to work with your GP coordinator to choose um, a client. They'll probably present you with like three options um, for your group, and you can choose the client that your group will be working with. Um, and then some examples of the final business deliverables include doing a financial analysis, a cash flow analysis, a marketing analysis, um, a return on investment analysis for loans, a basic business plan, um, loan recommendations, marketing tools like brochures, um, and things like that, and also an action plan. So um, you probably won't be doing every single one of these, but a combination of some depending on the business and what their needs are, um, and working with um, them to figure out kind of what their end goal is for the telebrigade and what you know they're looking for from you. And then finally, um, with fundraising goals. So for the fundraising goals for students for the Business Telebrigades program, um, you, if you have a group of four to seven volunteers, so like I said, this can be students, this can be family, this can be community members, whoever is interested, um, you'll be working with one business client and the donation goal per person is 475 USD. Um, and then the more volunteers you have, um, the more business clients you can work with and the lower the donation goal. So eight to 14, um, you'll be working with two business clients and you'll probably be, be splitting up into some smaller groups to work kind of more one-on-one -on -one with a business client. And then, um, you know, 15 to 21, three business clients and 22 plus is four. Um, and then, you know, you can come back together as a group and discuss and compare deliverables and things like that. Um, so, yeah, that is the breakdown of fundraising goals um, for the Business Telebrigades program. Um, and you can see the breakdown here um, of, of the actual donation goal. And the same thing was on um, the medical one as well. And, and for the public health and engineering, we have that. Um, but I just wanted to put that up there so that you could see an example. And, you know, if, if you're really interested in public health, for example, or engineering, um, please reach out to me and we can go over those ones in detail together. 
So getting involved, we have about 10 minutes left um, and I wanna leave some time for some questions, um, but really would love to hear from you. Um, we have a Become a Chapter President form. Um, so if you wanted to fill that out, I can actually send the link um, to all of you in the chat if you want to fill out that become a chapter president form um, But with that you'll actually receive specialized support um, from the volunteer engagement team So if you're in Canada or the UK um, You will be working directly with me um, if you're in the US depending on the region um, Two of my co-workers Ali and Rebecca will be reaching out to you um, but we want to be able to support you in starting a chapter on your campus. Um, so we will walk you through all of the steps to do that and support you along the way. Um, and so that is probably, you know, the number one way to get involved and to really get this going at your university or in your community um, is becoming a chapter president and leading a telebrigade. Um, and then the next one is joining an upcoming open telebrigade. We actually have some of our first open telebrigades happening August 24th to 29th. Um, so there is a link on this presentation um, and it's also, there's a link on our website as well um, to request more information and get involved. Um, so if you are interested in like going on a telebrigade in a month, um, then definitely this is the option for you. Uh, and you can reach out to request more information there. Um, and then finally, just following us on social media, you can find us um, on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn, and there's lots of different options where you can find us on social media, but we're probably the most active on Instagram and Facebook, um, but would love to you know, see you on social media as well, and we are posting updates and information about how to get involved all the time there. Um, so those are um, some of the options on ways to get involved. Um, we would love to have you join the movement. We're really excited about um, Telebrigades and this new virtual opportunity that I wanted to share with you all today. Um, so if you're interested on, in making an impact um, on your campus, in your community and abroad, um, please connect with us. My email's on this slide as well. Um, it's just anna.jamison at globalbrigades.org. Um, so if you are at all interested, if you want me to share the slide deck with you or share the pamphlets with you, or even if you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one call to chat more, um, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, so please reach out and yeah, we would love to hear from you. Um, we have about five minutes left. Um, before you know we have to you guys have to hop off um, for another session but would love to take some questions i'll open the chat again um and if you also wanted to unmute yourself and ask a question that's also i'm i'm totally happy to do that as well i have a question yeah of course um, so just to make sure I heard everything, I had to step out for a few minutes. Um, the only ways to get involved with this um, is because of COVID, we can do the telebrigades when it's open, an open session, which is in August, or we can open a chapter on campus. Yeah, so you can actually, if you wanted to um, start a chapter, you can have a telebrigade anytime. You can schedule it anytime if you wanted to do it, you know, in, in the fall semester, over winter break, whenever. Um, we're also actually scheduling in-person brigades. Um, so participating in our programs in person, which is like a whole nother probably 45 minute to an hour presentation um, that and we're also scheduling those for 2021. Um, but with increased flexibility, just because we're really unsure about the state of travel and, you know, how things are going to progress in the next couple of months. So um, we are scheduling in person brigades for 2021. So if that is something that you're interested in as well. Um, that is totally an option and would love to chat more about it with you um, if you just wanted to send me an email or something like that. But um, yeah, those are kind of the main ways. So getting like starting a telebrigade chapter um, or just any chapter on campus if you wanted to start an in-person brigade chapter. It's kind of it's the exact same process. 
um, in terms of getting things set up. It's just whether or not you want to schedule a telebrigade or an in-person brigade. Um, or you can, you know, start by attending the open telebrigade and then maybe that'll inspire you to start a chapter on campus. Um, but those are kind of the main things that are going on right now that we, you know, are encouraging people to, to sign up with. Okay, thank you. No, no problem. Any other questions? Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Beth. I'll also stay on um, until everyone else hops off. So if you wanted to stay on and chat one-on-one -on -one for a couple of minutes, um, really happy to do that as well. But I really hope to hear from some of you. Um, and if you are interested, um, letting me know um, via email. I also just sent the Become a Chapter President form in the chat. Um, so if you wanted to fill that out, one of our volunteer engagement associates, myself or Ali or Rebecca, will get in touch with you right away um, to start a new chapter. So yeah, would love to hear from all of you. Um, and it was a pleasure to be able to share this information tonight and get a chance to chat with all of you. But as I said, um, you know, we do have about five minutes left in the session. So feel free to hop off. Um, that's all the information I have. But if you did want to stay on and ask a one on one question or something like that, I will stay on um, the call until everyone else hops off. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I had, I had like a quick question. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I don't like have much knowledge with like medicine or business. I'm going to political science. Mm -hmm. So is there still a way for me to like join a tele brigade? Yeah, you can, you don't have to have any previous experience um, as, you know, in, in medicine, in, in anything um, or business. I was actually an environmental science and political science student um, when I started to get involved in university and I participated in water and public health brigades and I loved it. Um, so you don't have to have any previous experience to get involved, um, even if you you know, are just interested in business and want to take part in a business telebrigade or, you know, um, that's totally, you know, where your interest lies. Um, you definitely don't have to have any previous experience. But like I said, I was a environmental and political science student um, when I got involved with global brigades. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for the presentation. Yeah, of course. Um, and to answer Les, your question from the Caribbean district, can I register for the tele or only U.S. citizen, U.S. citizen, sorry, you can definitely register. Um, the only thing that I will say is that you will have to fundraise in USD. So if that is not a problem for you to um, upload your funds and upload your donations in U.S. dollars, then totally please join us. We would love to have you. Um, and then, um, there's another question. Is there any way to not start a chapter, but apply for a brigade with my circle K club? Um, so if you already have a group of people through circle K that you want to go on a telebrigade with, that's wonderful. Um, you can definitely, you don't have to go through the process to start a chapter, um, cause you already have your group of people really starting a chapter is about registering as a club on your university campus and things like that on your school's campus. So if you have a group of people who you, through Circle K, that you want to do a telebrigade with, um, awesome. That's great. Just email me and we can get you all set up and get everyone signed up onto a brigade page and, and things like that. So um, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. We're really flexible with that type of thing. So happy to help you facilitate that any, in any way I can. No problem. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for doing this. This was great. Very much yeah, appreciate you taking the time on a Sunday to join us. Yeah, of course. It was wonderful. I hope to hear from a lot of people um, and I'm really excited. It was a great time to just be able to share a little bit more information. So thanks for helping to facilitate, Jeff. That was great. Absolutely. And we're going to, um, we've recorded this, so we're going to make it available on our, you know, on our various YouTube channel and so on and so forth. So great. we can spread the word even further. Wonderful. Great. You th thank you and have a wonderful day. You too. Have a good night. Bye. Night.